that as we move from the heavens to meet the needs of the people to produce a leader for the city of Eva, that we have a sweet spirit among us. We need to meet the needs of the people. We need to raise up a leader that will be fair, impartial, that will represent the fact that righteousness exalts a nation and sin is a reproach to any people. We need communities built. We need families restored. We need finances. We need favor from above. We need you. You know what you're doing and who you're putting in the seat. And we pray right now for that person's family, for the hope of this city. In the name of Jesus Christ, in this song. Okay, um, my name is Francis Caldwell, I'm the Executive Director of the African American Museum, and I want to welcome everyone on behalf of the museum, and thank Mr. Ben and Mr. Kelly for coming to the museum, and uh, giving us an opportunity to talk to you and understand what the platform is. So thank you. Now I want to thank uh, Gabal Brown. Gabal is one of our board members, a young man right here. He's the one to set up all the technical stuff. So please give him a round of applause. <laughs> he's a joke for two days. And he set the whole thing up. So I want to recognize him. I want to also recognize Kathy Poland for uh, organizing and emailing and calling him. So, we want to recognize all the people who are uh, responsible for putting this event together. And also, oh, Mr. So Pablo here, Mr. Reed. Okay, so we on schedule today. Uh, and I say briefly, I just want to again thank everybody and please support the African American Museum. Uh, we're in the process of getting together uh, on your seat some postcards. I put some big postcards in everyone's seat. We can be a member, we can donate, we can be a volunteer, or you know, you can do anything and help with the facility. And as you can look around and see, the museum needs a lot of help. And we've done a lot considering on the volunteer, being a volunteer. And we welcome any and all of you to come out on Saturdays from 12 to 4. We do our volunteer day and we pay and whatever we got to do. So, just say that. The next thing I'm going to do is, where is Ms. Mitchell? Oh, Jimmy. Come on up, Jimmy. She has a point that she does that I do as well. And she does it so well. And then we're going to move right into our questions and with our moderators. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Catherine Coleman, 
with the Imperial Women Coalition and Women's March Freedom and the activists and the black community and anybody who cares about this election. It's one of the most important elections in years. The first time we will elect, elect the mayor in 16 years. I want to say thank you and farewell to Mayor Jackson for a job well done. Give him a hand, please. I want to announce the groups that are associated with this. The Imperial Women Coalition, the African American Museum, uh, Elaine Goldstein, who was speaking a minute with the Black Women's Black, the Carl Stokes Brigade, where are you? Black on Black Crimes. Did we leave anybody else out? The Brick House Wellness Center. Uh, Let me say, Black Money Matters. Black Money Matters. The reason we're having, and thank you so much for the candidates. We want to thank their campaign managers for working with us. I see Mr. Joe Fouché back there. Raise your hand, please. Uh, good afternoon to Mr. Kevin Kelly. Did you give him a hand? And to Mr. Bill. Just a bit. They will be participating in a runoff on November the 2nd. They were the two leading tech candidates in a seven-way right way race. It is a nonpartisan election. Whatever you do, we need you to vote. I see a congressional candidate, Laverne Jones Gore. Could you raise your hand, please, Ms. Gore? We see Jeff Nixon with the Cuyahoga County Democrat, uh, Cuyahoga County Black Lives Matter. We've already introduced Councilwoman Yvonne Conwell, but she is also head of the National Congress of Black Women Greater Chief Cleveland Chapter. And we have our beloved Zach Reed here for our council, Zach Reed. We have, Ford. We have Ronald Shern of the Peacemakers. Uh, we have Carolyn Wells with Spectrum News. We thank Spectrum News for always following us when we do these kind of things. And we have the great Wayne Dawson from Pop State over there. And here comes the former Senator Shirley Smith, who we love dearly. And then we have Cat Cowboy County Councilwoman Yvonne Conwell. So raise your hand, Cat Conwell. Going out to the door there. We have Mr. Gardner with what is your group? Um, G Productions, Voice of Radio, Nerve DJs. Yeah, now, now before I want to sit down, I want to say that Margaret Day Patterson. And we have the great Charlie Ben back there. And I see State Representative Stephanie House. Recognize Mr. House, please. Can we leave out anybody? We have the Reverend Goldston here. It's the Goldston, Reverend Goldston right there. So we're going to get started. But my role, real quick, I'm going to say this very quickly, since I did have organized it. We want you to know very quickly what the black activists. Why we did this, we did this is because we're tired of them featuring ideas for me, as well as uh, all these white folks don't get mad at me and forgetting about the black community. And I'm not anti-white. We want to know what's going on here. I will come back out at the end. I have three minutes. They want to say this. What we expect of the candidate. Here comes Michael Nelson. Let me tell you what we expect of you, and then I'm going to sit down. We expect you to have a diverse team. We expect you to have a diverse law enforcement leadership team. We expect you to do right by black children and to diversify the Cleveland public schools. We expect you to deal with excessive force and its heightened violence against black women. And we expect you to let blacks be. If you go down to Cleveland schools, you see nothing but people that don't look like us in a majority black city. I'm going to sit down, and before I sit down, I say, no justice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, we going to see. I was looking for Donna Brown and. Okay, well, okay. Uh, who's up? Who's not? It's Laura Spray. 
Okay, so what we do is we will skip to Ms. Conwell and Mr. Reed. And they're going to come up and tell us why they support their candidate. Ladies first. And I knew Ms. Conwell would come because she's a Leo, I'm a Leo, and we're not scared of anything. That's right. Yes, you can. You can hear me. Get the mic. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. These always throw me off. I am blessed to be here, and we're all blessed to be here. Amen? Amen. Pardon my real tardiness, but I think I made it under the wire because we have our, our general meeting for our National Congress of Black Women and Great Women chapter at Eastern on Saturday. And so I'm hearing that. I'm glad that I did it close by and I was able to get here. But my hat today, not the National Congress of Black Women, is actually County Councilman Yvonne Conwell and why I am supporting Planning Council today. I want to start off by saying good luck to the candidates. Um, I think I shared that with my chapter in the past. But it's all about us. You know, what they're going to do for us as a city, we have a lot of issues that are impacting our city. First and foremost, as an elected official, I need to walk, I need to walk across the aisle with all kinds of forms of level of government and elected officials. And how can I have a good relationship? And that's how you get things done. You can't just get it done on the county level, you can't get it just done on the city level. We need to commit to the stakeholders, what the congressional panel I mean, you don't imagine all of us trying to get all across the city level, the state level. We have to direct to the um, correct office that needs to help their issues. I'm kind of one of those ones that represent you know, Eric Glass, the county council member, who represents the city of Cleveland. Not all of it, but a good portion of it. So my daily interactions really reflect in working with the council members that are in my district, both with the mayor and with the president. And I can stand here today and say that I've done no change State housing. If some of these county issues impact what's going on at the local level here in the city of Cleveland, violence, mental health, um, infant mortality is one of the big ones that I think we need to step up. And even though the statistics say the white, uh, the white uh, female pregnant counterpart, um, all of it was uh, the numbers were great all across the board. But even though we threw money at it. White numbers came down. Black females were still having problems with mortality and loss of their children in the first year of their life. So it takes not only a council president or a city of Cleveland like council member or county council or state, we also need people in the We need every single stakeholder. How do we really look at that? I'm just taking that issue as for example. Really bring those numbers down. We threw money at it. Come on, we threw money at it, guys. How do we get those numbers up? Working with Kevin Campbell, he has so much to do. He brings those things across the aisle, which I like to say, across the street. You see across the street, town council representatives. Because you see the data from all across the county that we're losing. And as you can tell, our black people are kind of moving out. They're not just in the city of Cleveland right now, folks. Look at the latest thing. Garfield. So this is a county issue. Mental health. We know how this all impacts. Today we were just on the call talking about the violence that's occurring in the schools. You know, these things are on these candidates' shoulders. I'm confident that Kevin Kelly has worked with me in a lot of forums, a lot of discussions with regard to mental health, violence, not to mention all the things that fall under the city of Cleveland government that needs to be handled and done. As a woman and as a mother, with all these issues that face us, don't you have to prioritize? All of us have to prioritize the things that we have to take, take care of us in the order of Sorry. So anyway, I can better say that I need to work with the council. 
Good afternoon. My name is Zach Green, the former head of state council in the South and Southern City of Cleveland. And I wholeheartedly endorse what's been due to be our next mayor of the city of Cleveland. You know that. Now let me ask you something you know. You know how I've fought for years for people of color. You're in a building right now. When only white people were making decisions in Columbus and putting money back in Cleveland, and it wasn't coming to our it was odd to move to city council in the last year to demand that the greater city partnership start spending money in our community. And that's one of the reasons, as you can say, this story, when you got money coming to this community. When they could think that we could hold a conference in Blue Easter Park, the largest urban park in the state of Ohio, and put 20,000 black folks in that park because they say black folks just don't kill each other. We brought the whole big deal to Israel. We brought the whiskey deal to Israel. We brought all those name brand names to our part of the city and no problem because I have friends in this city all the time. I sat down the whole thing. I didn't ask them for anything for me because I don't need it. My question is here, what are you going to do for the people on the top? And yesterday, Channel 19, sorry, Wayne, <laughs> just did a story on the fact that one of our local banks are going to start spending money. This is what they said. It's one of the neighborhoods that has disinvested for a significant amount of time. And that disinvestment has been difficult for black communities. And we know there's something we can do to help develop this community. Finally, they recognize that they're black people. Need help. Just as guaranteed, when you become mayor of the city, please don't start to look out for the black folks on the east side of the city of Cleveland. Justin has assured me that the investment downtown on the west side is not going to start to stop. But we're going to start investing in our community. Ms. Goldstein, she's been working in Ward 1 and helping in Ward 1. Listen to this past message. There has not been one new. The Lord brings to me, introduced Mr. Beard. I'm going to take this place. Uh, Mr. Beard is a 34 year old. Born and raised in the province of Cleveland Public Schools. He's a graduate of State Western Reserve University Law School. He was an intern with Barack Obama. And he was also a vice president of the bank. He is now a non what is that term? Executive what is the term? Chief strategy officer. The chief strategy officer. So I don't need to tell you any more about it. And it is how it can come up. So for Mr. Pibb, he is the youngest. If he were a main mayor, he would be the young, second youngest mayor in history behind Pibb's success. So apparently, uh, Mr. Pibb, he's a young black man. We're proud to have a young black man 
in the front of all this kind of black pity and pleading there's an all this negative stuff. And I'm going to give you time to walk around, but I want the media to know before I sit down that this event is also organized by activists, so don't do that media stuff and leave this out into your coverage. I'll give you time to walk around. I met one day with the Republican Party actually the first black woman to ever hold a Vegas committed chair. So I know I need to get another call. Thank you. For those of y'all that don't know me, I was the one who stepped out on the ground for a night. that brought the father the information in order for him to get a three million dollar settlement from the city. Who else gave it? Down. Okay. Down to that. But I was also the one that stepped out on the ground for the legacy program. Where the city of Cleveland got forty million dollars and more than that got nine point seven of it. So when I come to you, I want y'all to remember something. We are in the black building. This is about the history. And in this museum, when y'all go back and look at the artifacts, you're not supposed to judge a man by the color of his skin. See, we talk about racism, but you being racist as well. Let's judge a man by what he has done. Now, as an activist, let me tell you how this works. You know that public participation that they've been fighting for for years? Okay. Now, y'all gonna need to have a song with us. You like this. So they gonna need to talk about it. You said, I can read it. Okay, now, so can I say this? They want to cut the councilman's salary. Yes, and so we need to come as councilmen. We can't let them, y'all gotta fight for us in action. He says, you know, $30,000 of our salary is how we can be to fight for the people. And not let the, the, the big business and the, and the folks that own contracts and take down houses in the black community and not be not get mostly
Who's the moderator? That is not funny. That is not funny at all. Thank you. 
Constitutional Program, all across our community to make sure our children are ready to succeed when they graduate from here next year. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is it just that two Is it two things, one rebuttal, or is it two and one? You get that. You get two things. Two and one. Uh, if you want to rebuttal from the case, you get one. Good. Top three priorities. He asked me to in our community seems to be dealing with falling in public safety. Nothing, <laughs> nothing else that we do does matter. If people do not feel safe in their homes, people do not feel safe in the streets, and they do not feel safe in the neighborhoods. We need to build neighborhoods where kids do not have to worry about walking to school. We need to build neighborhoods and create neighborhoods with culture of safety where people can sit on their front porch on beautiful fall nights like tonight might be without concern. The fact that people can hear gunshots or multiple gunshots should be something that we do not tolerate. Public safety is really job one. We need to make sure that we are ensuring access to opportunity. We need to stop talking about digital divide and it's an academic issue. This is something that disproportionately affects people of color. This disproportionately affects people that are living in poverty. And if the census is correct, and it's one of the most things I think it's correct here, that we're the least connected big city in the United States of America, that is not a path forward. It started off been involved in digital divide for over 10 years in the neighborhoods that I represent. We've got a plan that's going to go citywide to that for the money. We are going to connect all people to opportunity. Thirdly, we need to make sure that we stop accepting the reality that there are people, excuse me, there are thousands of children a day that have high paying jobs in healthcare, in skilled manufacturing, information services, in financial services, in skilled trades. Yet we are not properly training, educating, and skilling our citizens to take those jobs. So within the, within the greatest Take healthcare, for example. There are thousands of available jobs. Yet, within one square mile of these institutions, there are people that are unemployed, underpaid, doing this opportunity. We cannot live in that community. We cannot accept that reality. When I am there, your life expectancy, your health outcomes will not be determined by your distance. Any other questions? You need to speak plain. You need to speak a little plainer. Who was that one? It was the pistol microphone. Yeah. yeah. Get, get the good mic. The question is, do you support the 224, the Cleveland Bad Initiative for Police Reform? We are looking for a yes. I do not go to Springfield. I support accountability. I support reform. I support the path that we are on. I support the work of that current state committee. I support mm. those steps to try to change our system. I support the de escalation plan. I support training on body change. I support the entire shift in culture for the individual state from a warrior model to a guardian of our community model. I, if you look at what is contained in the consent decree, that is the path to reform. That is the path to accountability. The number of these forces that we need to work with going on. The complaints against the prison division of police. The lack of, we have not paid out significant settlements since the challenge of the consent decree. We deal with this frequently. This is the path. Are we done? Absolutely not. The reason I do not support issue 24 is I believe it would lead to less accountability. Because right now we have a chief of police that's accountable, and ultimately we have a mayor that is accountable for all these decisions. Mm. If we take that authority and give it to a board uh, to make decisions, to not have training for information that can make decisions that will override the chief of police, that will override the safety director. The chief of police.
ठीक है ठीक है
Um, to do to the Dalton Hospital. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but if we look at this, this policy, balancing the danger of high, of high, of high frequency against the danger of allowing dangerous criminals to go free. Now, the policy is a good policy. I have had multiple discussions with the lieutenant that have helped write it and we've been really involved in drafting it. The problem with the policy is it is not user friendly. It is a 17 page policy, and because the guidance is only in terms of how to use it and when to authorize change is not clear, the presumption is to not, it should not be clear. And that's why that kind of bugs some of the controversy of these women. But to answer the question, yes, the policy is good. We can't forget when we hear about the, uh, the secret law and authorize what happens, but let's not forget the people that still want it as a result of how we change the policy. For exactly now, this policy is the right balance that it needs to be modernized, it needs to be skimmed out, it needs to be more transparent, it needs to be more criteria so that the person authorizing and not authorizing the speech has good, solid reasons and good, solid um, you know, criteria to make that decision. Uh, yes. Uh, yes, that's why I support it to report. Because it will make our police commission permanent beyond the consent decree. Uh, and if elected mayor, I'm going to make sure that we abide by that policy because it offers the best roadmap for reform to finally get policing right in the city of Man. That's right. The consent decree is the path to accountability. The consent decree is the path to reform. Like everybody knows, that the consent decree doesn't have a time limit for the delay. That agreement, the consent decree is considered an object determined that the city of Cleveland has established substantial compliance with this agreement. Uh, if we look at the way that we laid out in our initial form, that is the path. And I will support that until the judge makes the determination that, yes, Cleveland, you have achieved substantial compliance with every element. How would you address the claim that city resources are disproportionately allocated to provide more resources to large white west side wards in comparison to majority black east side? Uh, yeah, Equity is going to be a part of every decision that I make as mayor. Every dollar, every person, child, we're going to create a staff, a city that will reflect the residents of the city, city government in these terms. In terms of where resources are spent, I would suggest that we, we should not be, or excuse me, it's not a, the real dis, disproportionate spending isn't as much city government as it is private sector. The private sector is largely ignoring the east side of Cleveland. That is why it's important that we, we work together to drive investment into East Side neighborhoods. Like we've done, and I, I see my colleague Kevin Shannon is here down in the We like we did with one goal, the millions of dollars that we share. The private sector is ignoring the ones that came in for decades. And with the neighborhood transformation, we've seen the harvest. What about the harvest? 
go about minimizing this if elected mayor. Mr. Kelly. Thank you. We need them to be done with these things. We need to encourage more small businesses, more black owned businesses to be a part of this $1.8 billion of economic power that the city spends annually. That's got to be the modernization of the and streamlining the process. Right now, the only thing that's broken is that it costs money.
first and foremost. I will also say this. We need more equity around the quality of after school programs in our neighborhood, especially in our rec centers. I go to some of the rec centers on the west side, they look like they're big city college campus too. I'm not lying, Burke. I'm in Albany. It, it looks like we're still in 1970. Come on, man. Tell the truth. We don't prioritize black people in the city. So I will say this in terms of Eric Gordon, you know, I've seen some positive things from Eric Gordon. Um, and when he's elected, I'm going to reassess that uh, within my first year. Thank you. MSD means everything to me. No city can hope to thrive if we do not have a modern, high functioning school system. I have four kids in I have five kids. I have had my children in uh, Brooklyn schools. I've had them in partner charter schools. And I've had my children in CMSU schools. Right now, my daughter is in the CMSC school, and it is a very diverse classroom, and it is a very diverse teaching staff, and her interest is just very wide. What we need to do as we move forward, we'll be working in Parker. It's a, just a fantastic school, and as we move forward, we have to understand that these kids have a few broken ones that we have. We have a whole system challenge before they move forward, and that is something that I absolutely intend to do. We need to make sure that we are investing in those kids. Make sure that we are every child of CMSD. We need they need to be able to see just as any kid from Provo, from Bayfield, from Montevideo, our kids need to see that they need to succeed. I want to make sure that CMSD has broadband access to every child. I want to make sure that we have a rich, diverse uh, pool of principals, teachers, because I see Eric at my daughter's school. That is the path forward. And one thing we need to do now, that we should have done right now, we need to keep put moving forward on this. We need to accept what we lost during COVID. I sat through, I left with my daughter's syllabus for Zoom meetings, for Zoom classes. We expect the teachers to go from teaching subject matter to teaching them how to upload their homework. We need to do a better job of accepting what was lost because we did lose it. And we need to figure out what the path forward is, what resources do we need to give those kids. I'm Eric Gordon. I think he's had a number of successes. Um, I haven't made that decision. Yet, but I'm certainly open to listening to. Uh, are you kidding me? He has done a lot of things to push this. No, he ain't. No, he ain't. Do something to change. How would you address the complaint that inner city black neighborhoods are in distress while city officials continue to build up? The, the answer to this question comes down to investment. It comes down to where do we invest the dollars. And again, the central business district of downtown is a lot of private sector investment. The city will do things, take steps of financing tools to make that happen. But we need to take those tools and make sure that we are investing in the city at the same level. And I'm really asked what we're doing with the major transformation plan. I've already mentioned one goal. But one goal is we need to, again, look at beyond the bricks and mortar, beyond infrastructure. We need to look at the revitalization and confidence that that gives people to live in our community. We need to look at what's happening at 121 at the at 121 Martin. We need to look at what's going to happen in Buffalo. Look at the plans for what's happening on um, West 26th Street um, and Waterway and Stanford. We need to invest in those neighborhoods. We have to not accept the fact that the private sector largely glosses over our communities of color and communities of value. They caused the disinvestment. They caused the growth decades ago when they enacted policies of redlining. And when they got caught and they took those lines away, they said there's a disinvestment, the threat is already here, so then they said there's a credit problem. Well, what neighborhoods were targeted during the predatory lending crisis? What neighborhoods were targeted when we had the foreclosure crisis? We've seen an right. up, absolutely, we've seen up, up close and personal when the census was changed, Kevin and I were there, as the Provoke recession, the number of families left in our city because of red line, because of growth, because of predatory lending was caused by the private sector, can't get away. We need to invest. Are 
how great he is. Just like I have a priority for him to hit me before. Now, I'm just going to look forward to the prior question. But I want to make this my legacy on the record that over the next two years, we try to raise $5 billion. It's it's not a broken single giving of stock and substance of the money time, in my opinion. The question also talks about the lack of quality and service that you see in predominantly black and Christian cities. This is all about transparency. Um, when we leave a store, we get a receipt. So as a tax paying citizen in the city, I want to give you a receipt of how we spend your money. I'm gonna I would love to get the board. Um, that's pretty good. I would often say when you call the mayor's action line, if you, if you do call it, you should be able to call the mayor's action line and track that complaint, and you can track it on the We should have a library that sits in the front door of the city hall. That's right. Now, why do you got to pay two buses or pay $10 to park and come to your mayor or not to the city government? we got to bring the government to the people. That's how you get real equity and transparency and the real revitalization of the city hall. That's right. That's right. That's right.
basically what we need to look at. We need to look at how we got in, in silos or general or lead. We need to look at our housing stock and what are we doing to afford? We need to be able to say, yes, we need to take down the risk of unemployment. But we also need, we need to make more dollars available for people that want to stay in their homes. Like you just can see the age of unemployment. We need to make sure that we are giving people the dollars that they need to bring their, their homes to code, to live in the community, to strengthen our community. Um, Anyway, time is up. Talk about it is. It's time is up. Next question. If I will. What would be the consensus force on the conditions of the black community as well as loopholes in the collective bargaining agreement between the city and police patrolmen association? Some say further police misbehavior and often prevent. Inadequate discipline and firing is significant or deliberate excessive force pulling by police. Okay. We need to continue to make sure every officer has crisis intervention training. We need to continue to make sure that every officer present every next class coming up has de escalation training. We need to make sure that there are no exceptions. To the body cam program, you can turn body cam off. That's got to be something that's on all the time. We need to make sure that we're dealing with cases in a fair, consistent manner. They just came out right there. You mentioned uh, Phil, you mentioned the, uh, the, the collective bargaining agreement. They just came out right now is inconsistent decisions out of legislation. And we need to continue a, a path forward, recommend discipline on a consistent basis so that we have precedent to rely upon. So, another thing we need to do is when we recruit, when we bring our students to that class, we need to make sure that we are, that those classes, when we recruit, have the values, the diverse, they represent the values of the city community, they represent diversity, they represent you know, people that have a different view of policing than we had 10 years ago. This is something that we have made progress on, that's something we will continue to make progress on, but we have to focus on this to be crisis intervention. Yes, wait and think. There can never be an option. There can never be a time when the body can be found. There can never be a time when people are held accountable for the fair job that they're expecting them to do. We have made progress, we can make progress, and we will make a change. Next question. Next question. Next question. Next question. Next question. Next question. Thank you. 
fifty dollars an hour. Are you a leader? Do you want to lead this great great portion of the time in this intricate experience? What about the rest of the world? You talk about small businesses You gotta think about small businesses. You gotta think about places. You gotta think about places. What about the rest of us? What about the rest of us? What about the rest of us? What about the whole? What about the rest of us? Racism is a public crisis in Cleveland, as it is in other major American cities. What would you do to minimize this if elected mayor? Didn't hear the question. I didn't question. Racism is a public crisis in Cleveland as it is in other major American cities. What would you do to minimize this if elected mayor? Thank you. Racism is a crisis. It's a public health crisis. That's why Cleveland City Council is the first public entity to declare racism as a public health crisis. In this meeting, the council, this was born. I think it's going to be forward. It's going to be, this is going to be the land that we make the city to. This is how we're going to look at investment. This is how we're going to look at where we deploy public health. This is going to be the land that we determine where is crime, where is safety, how we make sure that we have delivering services in an equitable way, knowing that racism is a public health crisis and a public crisis. Thank you. Just a few quick things on this. Number one, uh, once elected mayor, I am going to hire the chief racial equity officer in my cabinet. This cabinet level official will work across every single department in my administration to make sure that we are no longer having policies and regulations that further exacerbate racism in this city. Secondly, I am going to have a participatory budgeting process in my administration once elected mayor. So that all community voices around the table have input on how we're spending public money to further increase equity in the city. Because your budget, I'm say this again, your budget will be reflecting your values. That's right. And values can have a lot And you're reflecting on what's not going to get serious about eradicating racism beyond just the preference. That's what we got to have. All right, we are now offering the final statement for our candidates. Uh, we will begin with uh, Justin Taylor. Uh, until we get the final statement, we want to know has a, a candidate who has no elected uh, experience? We're talking about experience? Yeah, elected experience. That is the question. How would you talk to the voters? Well, um, I think when you look at how I ran my campaign, I beat politicians in this game nearly 100 years. Come on, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I that's right. Number two, by listening to the people of the city. That's I right. Front of folks, the back off. And as a brother, I was going to go for it. don't look like Trump so, to me. And thirdly, don't look like Trump to me. It was that time he looks like a, he looks professional to me. I would also say this: I spent my entire career trying to make something better. I was a business leader at a global firm called Gallup, one of the mayor all across this country. I understand. I supported a one point seven billion dollars business IT, and I fought for more affordable, equitable public transit at the border of our community. I've been endorsed by Senator Sherrod Brown, over eighty members of clergy in this community. And the people said I was ready on September 14th. They're going to say it again. That's right. All right. All right. No. <laughs> Woo. Councilman Kevin, um, many argue from the that you are a man that the status quo has been yeah. in your city. So, in your closing statement, can you speak to our community to let blacks know what would be different under? The people of Cleveland, Ohio, like to Frank Jackson to be the mayor. How would you like to be the mayor? Miss Day. When I made the decision, how do I do the best thing that I can? And I worked within those parameters. 
And the other thing, he makes a second, and one of those things that have happened, but the general response to our is different. And they require different solutions, different leadership, and a different approach to how we solve problems. That's exactly what I'm going to provide. And if you look at well, what is status quo and what is not, as the next legislative body, you see the table, is attacking youth mortality, status quo, and I guess it's status quo. Is putting in place a language access plan for City Hall, where there wasn't one, and that's going to come from the status quo in the Navy. Is providing an attorney for families that are losing their homes, is that status quo? Okay, well, that's what I've done. It's still racist. Those that are doing a hard work for prison, all the same challenges are my supporters. Captain Kevin Conway, Councilman Yvonne Conway, Pat Sharon Phillips, Norman Edwards, the Black Association Association, Captain Bishop, George Gray. They ain't done nothing. George Gray. Lane Worker, Kevin Conner, Ronnie Conner, Mary Jackson, uh, Gordon Wilson, GTAC. These are people that are saying that we are in the streets doing the work all the time. The work's not going to stop. The approach is going to change. It's going to be a new approach. It's not going to be satisfied. I'm going to take the same work out, the same record of accomplishment that I've had in the lane of the Lane County President. And that's why I can do the work. The Lord is even elected. The Laura's Gray not even elected yet. Are you going to be a champion of the black community? That's all I mean. 
Thank you. Uh, question. This is a you know the whole central issue to talk about. But if you look at you know who is going to tell the kids, why can you suggest that the the decisions are made? Who is best to provide services? I would ask people. No bad problems. I would just ask you to look at who's going to count this thing. When projects are stuck, please ask my colleagues. The reason I'm worried of my of my black colleagues is because they're here. The reason is that when things are stuck, when investments need to happen, I take the step to make sure that the dollars are spent right where they belong to the purpose of our division. I have been on campus for three years now, I'm very proud of those things. I'm very proud of what has been directed at the capitalists in the black community. And I've worked with my colleagues. I think if you don't know me, if you haven't met me before today, I think that I really rely on the character of the Congo family. And those that are supporting me to be able to look at the person that I am. I would encourage you to do that. I would encourage you to look at where dollars are going to be, projects that are changing, and the council president to answer that question. Thank you. As a black man who lives in Cleveland, and as a black mayor, the black woman who brought my name, I'm not doing my damn job. I'll tell you that. And I'm, I come from the schools of Daryl Washington, Mary Berry, Manny Jackson, and Andy Young. Like, that's the flavor, that's the model for competition. That's right. Okay, I have a question for you two. Uh, would you, Mr. Pioneer, would you put the trade back into the public school? Real quick, my brother graduated from Aviation High. He got a job with your lady. He's been there for 35 years. He made 45 dollars. Forty-five dollars an hour because he wanted to trade in Aviation High, which would alleviate a lot of the crime that we have in our city because our children could graduate from school and have a trade and make money. So, would you advocate that? Because we don't report this now, so please report it. And then, when I say let's report it, it's please call me. The answer is yes. Definitely, uh, let us know. We've been working to bring schools. That day, we talked about having an inside that day. We've been looking for real estate. We've been looking for that school. It was a policy that they all had to go. The trades are the path to a middle class position. But I need to work with the trades. I know it's more than the black contract is going to to bring people into the trade. Sir, we're William, sir. Just making sure I ask. I want to make sure that every junior and senior has got the same as you have to work in a year round apprenticeship or internship. They can make $15 an hour. Thank you. Thank you. We got to do this closing song we always do. Don't you forget it. I need everybody to stand here. Uh, thank you to the candidates, Francis.